So there are several things I've done here to make this easier to read in terms of the data. Um, so what this represents is um, astronomical objects from planets to the asteroid belt to um, Voyager 1. Um, and where we've got this outlier with uh, Voyager in terms of the numbers, um, I've tried to make it easy to read by colouring it a different way. And I've used a, a shape here, a parallelogram, to show the join between the, the top axis and the bottom axis in terms of this break here, going from 50 to 150. Um, because, as I'll show you, if I were to just put a single chart to display this data, um, it wouldn't look very good. So yeah, this this is what we're going to try and achieve today, a broken axis column chart. And this is uh, one of many methods for displaying data with an outlier. So here we go, here's our, our data. So if I just go ahead and insert a column chart to begin with, so you can see from the outset this um, this outlier here with Voyager is making everything else quite skewed. I can't really read Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars in this chart. So what I'm going to do, first of all I'm going to create a second column. I'm just call this B. And then I'm going to say if that equals the max of B, return that value, else return zero. So all this does is effectively creates another column, uh, it, it creates another column and then with that I can use that to create another chart like so, which I'm going to place above. And this chart is only going to show our outlier. And next I'm going to delete the, the bottom axis because I don't need that. That's already here. I'm going to change the scale to be from 150 to 152. The major units are going to be 1, like so. And I might make this from 149, like so. Right. Uh, next, I'm going to drag this chart up to approximately halfway up the second chart. So what I'm going to get is a similar matching scale. I'm just going to adjust this. So let's say I want this to go to 120, 100, let's see. I want to still show the scale on the bottom axis. But for this outlier of uh, 153, um, which is three times bigger than the previous or than the next smaller, the next biggest star size there, which is Pluto at nearly 50, um, this again just makes it easy to read. So, what I'm going to do, just for the sake of this, making it uh, a bit cleaner. Um, these zero values on the top chart, I'm just going to make them invisible. And then finally, select this one alone for the Voyager value. And I'm going to make that a different color. So I'm going to say, make that a solid fill and make this a dark blue. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom table. Make this the same dark blue, like so. So we've got a fairly easy to read chart now, but there are some extra levels of presentation we can add. Um, I'm just going to make this say Pluto. I'm just going to up the scale on here, so make that say size 15. And you know these these things as a there are tweaks you may need to make now and again. So let's just do. Let's make it 100. Yeah, what can we do? 110? 
some of it is trial and error with this stuff. I mean, <clears throat> because what you want is a similarity in the uh, in the charts themselves. Let's make that zero. You want the lines to be roughly equivalent. Um, let's just do lifting. Yeah, one twenty. Let's see. One thirty. Make the major units ten. I'm just gonna make this under ten. Right, that'll, that'll do. Um, so the next thing is to clean up these uh, bar charts. So because they're overlapping and they also have a border, it looks slightly messy because you can see that border there and it looks like an extra grid line. So I'm gonna say no outline, no outline, and already that's a bit cleaner. I can add back an outline with simply adding a shape, which I'm going to do now. Just add a box, remove the fill, and then make a medium gray for the stroke. And then using the Alt key with the shift left, oops, left shift, that means I can snap that to the grid like so. And we're almost there with this. Um, Charts, but I may just uh, quickly tweak that again. So, um, the same way I did with the, um, the final version, I'm just going to add a gradient on the bars. Um, what this does. I just make sure that's fading in the right direction. I'm going to be adding a shape to then make the splits in this uh, outlier bar a bit prettier. Um, and I'm going to be using a shape with a, a white fill. Oops. I just want to make these lines a bit cleaner too. So they are going to fade to white at the midpoint there. So let's just do this back to the medium grey, make that white and make the position 50% like so and also change the oops, the direction like so. So you can see the lines of this uh, axis here fade across nicely and then you can't really see them at this point which then helps the next step which would be insert a parallelogram and I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees like so and this is just to go across the chart here and give a nice blend oops like so make that white and then no outline. So you could leave it there, but uh, I will just do one final step. And that is to, if I zoom in, just to add some lines. Like so. And we'll just format this to make it a bit thicker. So let's just do the width of uh, two points, oops, two points, and I'm going to make it match the same blue as the chart, like so. So if we zoom out back to 100, that's pretty much our finished chart, and then I'll just say uh, title. So that's it, yeah, that's that's um. That's a very quick way if I just make these 12 as well. Oops. So, um, that's a quick way of doing a split axis chart. Um, there are probably other ways of doing it, but for me, that's the most efficient, quick way of doing it without having to involve any third party plugins. Um, and 
as you saw there it's quite quick to to put together if it is just something for a presentation or um, something you're printing and you don't need it to be flexible in that the data may be changing then this is the quickest way to do so uh, yeah you could do it programmatically if you had a data set that was changing or you were doing a lot of different um, similar data sets um, but if it's just a one-off and you need to display something in a similar fashion to this with a broken axis this is the quickest way that I know of to achieve that goal so uh, yes there you go